And finally, we are here. This is our last uh, talk for the 2022 Europe in Next conference. And I'm privileged to be standing here today and hats off, though I don't have a hat, to the ERP Next, Frappe, and the community for giving me this opportunity. So, um, an introduction, a quick one. My name is Geoffrey Karani. I am the founder of uh, Upeosoft Limited. That's a company that is to the farthest uh, part of the uh, globe uh, in Africa, in Kenya, to be very specific. And our operations are from Nairobi. Nairobi is the capital city of Kenya. So, um, just a brief about me, I'm an enthusiastic uh, ERP Next uh, developer, and I also do some contributions to the, uh, to the community. Here and there, I do some videos, I also do uh, blog posts, so I have posted a lot about, uh, about ERP Next, and other topics on the blog that is here, kurukarani.com. The first website, uh, the first link is our website, that's where, that's the business, that's where our business uh, introduction is. And the last thing here is my personal email address. To the right there is my f a personal phone number. You can get me on WhatsApp, on Telegram, or you can even call me on that number. So just before I get started, um, the first two or three days we have had amazing presentations here. The first day was amazing, it was a real thrill, going through uh, technical presentations that actually felt like a roller coaster. Well, most of them felt like a roller coaster. The second day was a little bit relaxed, uh, but we still had one or two roller coasters. Today was totally relaxed. We, we, are, we, we have actually not uh, spent a lot of our brain power today processing what has, what has been happening until now, when I am yet bringing another um, simple session. I, I, I know most of you thought roller coaster. It's not a roller coaster. So the first thing that I want to us to look at here is, um, even before I go there, before I go there, I promise that we are not going to be looking at roller coasters today. So uh, I'm going to be talking mostly about ERP Next versus Odoo. But just before I go there, there are one or two things that I would like to point that I have found in the communities when I was engaging with them. I received many questions, both on YouTube and on my blog, about some of these things that I want to point out. There are just one or two things. The first one is, this, every document that you create on ERP Next or on Frappe comes with four uh, files out of the box. There is a JSON, uh, you can see them there, the, the J, JS file, the JSON, uh, the .py file, and the test document.py file. Now, I have seen developers write code or create files to write code that is specific to a document. You don't really need to do that because Frappe out of the box comes with uh, uh, and assign, uh, uh, for instance, the file that is here, testdriver.py file. So any kind of controlling code that you need to write that is specific to that document, you need to put it in that file. You don't necessarily need to create another file to do that. Now, the file that I told you not to create, actually sometimes you may need to create it, and that is the second thing that I want to point out. But this is when you need to write code that is not specific to a document. For instance, you want to write an API that is supposed to connect maybe to other uh, files or to other systems outside. Maybe you want, you want to do an, an, an integration and then you want to pull uh, some logic here and then maybe use it to manipulate one, two, three documents. You can do that using an additional file. There you can also see that that file is inside a services directory. So that also tells you that you can also create directories inside of ERP Next. That gives you a lot of control. Uh, within your ERP Next application. Now, this file can also be broken into multiple files, so you are not limited to just doing one file. If the file becomes too long, of course, good programming standards uh, dictate that you break it into multiple files that you uh, can maybe reference into each other and then get your application working. The third thing, uh, this has been uh, talked about every day. The day before yesterday, yesterday, and even today about automations, I don't need to go there. If you still have doubts about that, you can see me after this. I'm going to be answering those questions. And this is where I wanted us to come today. Now, I implemented uh, ERP Next for 23 uh, clients since 2014 until 2019. Those were five years of, sorry, not ERP Next, but Odoo. 
point of correction, ODU, not ERP Next. I was implementing ODU, and I did it for 23 clients within five years. So I have quite some good understanding of, uh, of ODU. Now, uh, how I came to learn about ERP Next? Of course, you know, when you have a working ERP, ERPs are difficult to, to understand and implement to clients. So when you get settled with one ERP, you want to stick to it. Every client you, you, you get, you want to introduce that ERP to them. And that, that was my situation with Odoo. Until then, I got one client who needed me to do so much customization for them. Uh, it was like, uh, the, what Odoo was offering was like 40% of what the client wanted. And I tried to do customizations, of course, with the little control that is there in Odoo. But I was disappointed, and my disappointment went over to the client. Because what I wanted, uh, what the client wanted was not actually getting achieved with Odoo. And therefore, what I did, one day when uh, I, I felt like I'm losing my business, I went home, uh, and I thought maybe I can try something else. And that is when I looked on the internet and I found ERP Next. Now, when I found it, the first thing I did was to spin up a digital ocean droplet. I tried to install ERP Next. Like most of you can attest, the first installation is uh, bumpy. So that was not uh, any different for me. I tried it the whole night, it didn't work, until morning. <laughs> so I managed to get it working in the morning. I tried a few things, of course I was a little bit sleepy, but I tried a few things and then went to bed in the morning. Later that day, I went to the client uh, without having learned a lot about ERP Next yet. And I told them I'm presenting something else to you. And we started looking at uh, uh, ERP Next with the client. And what gave me a green light is that the moment the client saw ERP Next's uh, interface, they loved it. So even before they could see whether the application will work for them or not, the interface alone made them like the application. And therefore we started there. Uh, it's like now we started trying to understand ERP Next with my client. Already the client loves how ERP Next looks, so let's see whether it works for me. So the first day we were there, we looked at the accounting module, the HR module, and all those. And then uh, we decided, let me go, and then try to understand it better, and then we can catch up after a week. After a week, I went to the client with a lot of confidence. By then, I knew how to customize things, although I was customizing uh, ERP Next documents, uh, of course, as the developers who are here know that's a bad standard. But I didn't know about uh, apps yet. So I was customizing the core docu documents, but the thing worked. And you know there's a, there's a saying in developers that if it works, don't touch it. So, so the thing was working. <laughs> I went to the client, the client was excited, and we implemented the application. So later, of course, I went and did the customizations the right way, but the thing worked for the client. And since then, every client that I got, I presented ERP Next. And let me tell you the good news. I have not received one client yet who has not loved ERP Next. The farthest I went to someone not liking it, <laughs> the farthest I went is a client who told me that the interface was very white, but then fortunately that was version 13, so I just uh, introduced them the black uh, mode, uh, the dark mode of ERP Next. <laughs> and it worked for them. So that's how I went into uh, ERP Next. Now, um, making videos. How did I come to making ERP Next videos? Of course, I did a number of implementations for a number of clients in ERP Next. And then I got yet another demanding client. This was a hospital. And uh, most of you who are from uh, uh, that part of Africa, you know, uh, Gut Roots Children's Hospital. It's one of the biggest hospitals in, uh, in East Africa for children. So uh, they wanted me to lead their team of developers to build a healthcare management system for them that was supposed to be built on top of what ERP Next is providing. So now they had a team of developers already, but of course the team of developers had no clue what ERP Next of Rapper was. It is the CIO who introduced them to uh, to ERP Next. So then, my task was this. How then do I work with a team of developers who don't know anything about ERP Next or Frappe? So I thought, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a WhatsApp group 
Then in this WhatsApp group, I am going to be sending links to videos that I've created to them so that they can consume. So I created the group, I added them. Then that day I started making videos. The first video, I posted it on YouTube. Then I sent the link to the WhatsApp group. But then when, when I did that, after about a week or two, I realized the views are going up and the comments are not coming from my developers. <laughs> so I, I discovered there is a need uh, in that space. So I, I decided, well, I'm going to be building even more videos, some of which are not specific for my developers. So that has been uh, going up every day. I've seen communities commenting on my videos until then I decided to start a blog. And so far, so good. I've gotten good feedback even from some of you sitting in this hall, and that has given me a lot of uh, motivation to continue doing the videos. So, the other thing that now I would give, and I normally give this every time I meet any client, why would you choose ERP Next uh, over Odoo? And most of the things I've given here, except the first one, of course the first one is my own reason, but all the other reasons that I'm going to be giving here are coming from my, uh, from my clients. So the first one, and this is a developer uh, reason, is the same reason what, uh, that introduced me to ERP Next. Remember, I almost lost a client because of Odoo uh, being uh, a little rigid in terms of customization. So customization in ERP Next is purely controlled by your ingenuity. Anything you can think about, you can customize. The code is there, and then they are very open for you to literally control any part of the document that you want. The second thing is uh, the open core, uh, open source nature of ERP Next that has been discussed by almost every speaker that came here, especially on the first day. So I'm not going to be going uh, to that. Yes, I'm not going to be discussing that too much. The second reason is, of course, the pricing mo uh, model. Look at Odoo's pricing model. And maybe some of you who have not interacted with Odoo, Odoo's pricing module model is very complicated. It is dependent on modules, it is dependent on uh, number of users you have and so many other parameters. It is very difficult for you to give a price to your client if you want to implement uh, Odoo. It's very difficult. Unlike ERP Next, which is straightforward, as you can see on this uh, screen here. The other reason, this one I got it from a London client, and you know, there's this thing that says a client does not know what they want. It is us to tell them what they want. Now, this one was very different. This client knew exactly what they wanted. The client called me and told me that I've been watching your videos and I know that you're good in ERP Next and I want you to move my database from Odoo to ERP Next. And he was very candid with that. So I asked them, I, I was curious and I wanted to know why exactly. Uh, it's not even a discussion, it's, it's something that you are sure you want to do. They told me one simple reason. Every time they hire somebody, a, a new uh, employee, it becomes very difficult for them to train that employee on Odoo. And they gave me a simple example of the screen that you're looking at today. The chart of accounts. This is in uh, Odoo, that is in ERP Next. In Odoo, you can't tell which is a terminal uh, account and which is a group account. It looks like this. And you can see ERP Next is very straightforward. You can, you, can, you can tell that. And then, of course, there are modules that are exciting and they are coming out of the box in, uh, in uh, ERP Next. I've just given two for today. The first one is project management. I saw a few hands the first day when someone asked who are using, uh, who are using project management. I'm also using it. It's an exciting application. And if you're not using it to manage your projects, I would recommend that you try it. It's very good. If you want that, uh, module on Odoo, you pay for it. And you pay for it for every user that uses it. The same case applies for e-commerce. Again, in uh, ERP Next, e-commerce is out of the box. Comes to you, you can customize it, you can use it as is. No, uh, no charges attached to it. On Odoo, it's totally different. You will have to pay for it. And finally, uh, I started Opelsoft in, uh, in 2022, March. And so far, I have a team of uh, 
six developers here I've shown four. Of course, this is me. Then those are, those are four. There is somebody who is not there. James is not there. But I have four. These are competent developers that I have. And I also have two that I am training to be good ERP next developers in the next one or two months. So a company that is uh, about, uh, about a couple of months old has now six developers. And that is the end of my presentation. And I would invite any questions that you may be having. Thank you.